Hi there, it's Jeff back again with another in our series of revision videos on key topics. This time it's macroeconomics, international economics. Let's spend some time together thinking about patterns of trade. So the pattern of trade is basically the mix of the goods and services that countries both import and export across borders. And it also talks about not just what we trade, but with whom we trade. So the range of countries... Uh, that are key for trade relationships. We'll take a look at the UK and the European Union in a few minutes. Now, the pattern of trade that we see in the data reflects underlying specialisation. Countries are specialised in certain industries and also reflects where the relative comparative advantages and you know, relative opportunity cost, supply cost for different products. Some countries have a very complex, highly diversified pattern of trade both of exports and imports they have the capability and the capacity to export a very wide range of products whereas others as we'll see and you probably covered this have a much narrower base of trade their pattern of trade is maybe highly dependent on just one or two industries or just a small cluster of countries so we make a distinction between the geographical pattern of trade which is basically the trade with whom we trade. And one concept here is intra-regional trade, and that's trade between countries in the same region. So within, for example, the member nations of the European Union or within Africa or within Asia. Theory tends to suggest that countries tend, nearly always in fact, to trade most with nations in close proximity. So you might want to look at something called gravity theory of trade. You can trade in any country in the world, but the closer you are, the lower are the transaction costs, the food miles and what have you. The commodity pattern of trade are the types of products, the mix of goods and services that are traded internationally. And again, we look to, we look to see the extent to which countries are dependent on one or more sectors, farming, manufacturing, services, for example. Now, many countries which are at an earlier stage of economic development typically rely heavily on primary products, oil, copper, gas, whatever it is, farm products, tea and coffee. Uh, whereas a nation, as a nation develops, often we see the complexity and capability of a country's trade increase. That means they're able and capable of supplying a much wider range of products. In terms of the UK, well, still, despite the fact we left the European Union three or four years ago now, uh, just under half of our exports still go to the European Union and well over half of our imports. So the European Union is far and away our biggest single trade partner as a bloc. Uh, about 4% of our exports go to China, whereas 13% of our imports come from China. Trade and balance there. The United, the United States is the single biggest country with whom we trade. Germany is second. And in terms of what we export... Well, again, these, these industries reflect our relative comparative advantage. So we're still a, a, an oil and gas exporter to a lesser extent than years gone by. Uh, car exports, pharmaceuticals, we're pretty strong out industrial machinery. And then you can see there the service sectors, business services, insurance, consultancy, for example, banking, and other financial services, telecommunications. And we're also the world's biggest exporter of cultural and creative services. Our biggest export partners in 2021, the United States is our biggest single export partner, 13%, uh, Germany 9%, Netherlands 8 Ireland and Switzerland. Switzerland, of course, is outside the EU. A large part of that, by the way, is gold. Our main import partners, well, China actually comes top, 13%, then followed by Germany, USA, uh, Netherlands and Norway. And again, Norway is outside of the European Union, but inside the single market. Now, this is a beautiful chart showing the pattern of our exports of goods and imports of goods. So this is exports, big problem. So every little square here, every little, the colours represent industries. Every little square represents a product. And you can see there are many, many different squares. So the UK has a diversified export pattern. Gas turbines, valves, computers, pharmaceuticals in purple, they're quite big. Uh, cars, aircraft parts, etc. Iron or crude oil, still there. Big 7% of exports are gold. 
Uh, textiles, very, very small, farming, less extent. On the right-hand side is our geographical pattern of trade. So you can see there that Europe dominates in terms of our total exports. European Union, of course, is a huge single market with a customs union and a single currency for 20 of their member nations. So, of course, the single market is a stage, a third stage of economic integration where there are four freedoms, freedom of movement of goods and services, labour and capital. And that deep integration, the creation of the single market, has brought down the transaction costs and the trade barriers within the EU, making it much more convenient and cost effective for countries to trade with each other. So that's known as intra-EU trade. Now, I'll show you the chart showing the balance between trade of nations within the EU with each other and outside the EU. It did actually fall from the early 2000s, but it's starting to pick up again. And you can see it's about two thirds. So the green area is the share of EU's EU exports sold to other EU countries. Whereas extra trade is trade with countries outside the EU, including uh, the UK. So about two-thirds of European Union trade is within the EU. You'd expect that. Slovakia are much higher. I think about 85% of Slovakia's trade is with fellow EU nations. Just under a quarter is with Germany, then Czech Republic, Poland, and so on. 5% with the UK. Whereas for a country like Germany, uh, Germany's top two trade partners in 2021 were outside the European Union, the United States and China. 6% of their trade is with the UK. I said I'd mention primary product dependency. It's another feature of patterns of trade. So this is where a country relies heavily for its exports on uh, extracting, maybe processing, but then exporting raw materials, primary products such as farm, farm goods, energy, copper, zinc, so on and so forth. The countries with very high primary product dependency, or PPD, uh, their macro economy, their growth, their exports, their fiscal position is often quite susceptible to fluctuations and volatility in world commodity prices and world demand. If you're exporting lithium or copper, for example, you are quite exposed to the world price. And that can lead to macroeconomic instability and occasionally uh, hamper a country's development. Uh, it's known as the primary natural resource curse. Many countries which are rich in natural resources don't necessarily become highly developed high income nations, in part because they haven't diversified their industries or their value added activities. So, good examples would be oil exporting countries, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Kuwait, uh, agricultural exporters, for example, the Ivory Coast is an exporter of cocoa, and mineral dependent countries such as Zambia and the DRC, who rely extremely heavily on copper exports. Kuwait, there we go, there's the trade pattern. The more little bits of the field there are, the more industries, well, Kuwait has a relatively narrow dependency there. Ivory Coast, green is cocoa, farm products, and there's Zambia with copper. You can see there in those three good examples, primary product dependency in terms of exports. Bangladesh doesn't have to be primary products. Bangladesh has a highly dependent export pattern on light manufacturing, in particular textiles. Millions of people work in textiles in Bangladesh. So green is textiles. And you can see there that uh, the sale of textile products, in particular to the EU and to the USA, is hugely important for Bangladesh. Now, what tends to happen, of course, over time is the patterns of trade do change as countries move through different stages of economic development. So hopefully, over time, Countries develop capability, capacity and complexity and that allows them to manufacture and provide and sell a, a bigger range of products within the world economy. Typically, a more diverse pattern of trade does require investment in both human capital, knowledge, skills, attributes and things, and also physical capital, machinery, technology, plant and equipment. And FDI, if you've studied developing countries, foreign direct investment into a country can also help to broaden uh, a country's export base, particularly if it, if it accelerates and acts as a catalyst for industrial diversification. South Korea over the years, now a high-income country, that was its export pattern in 1995, 
while still retained a very strong comparative advantage in circuits, telephones, uh, broadcasting equipment and so on, LDC, LED screens. Their car industry has become more significant, so to their pharmaceutical sector. Uh, so you can see there that they have a fairly diversified industrial base. Slovakia, let's go back 25 and 30 years, that was their trade pattern in 1995. Since then, of course, they've joined the EU. And one of the big stories in Slovakia is the investment in the manufacturing of and now the export of cars and broadcast equipment. Air pumps, what have we got there? Electrical transformers, ball bearings, video displays. Slovakia has become in many ways a, a sense of small economy. It's a few million people. It's become a centre for manufacturing in the European Union within the EU single market. A lot of foreign investment into Slovakia. And as a result of that, their trade pattern has changed. Emerging economies are countries that are not yet classified as developed, but they're investing heavily, often a high percentage of GDP and productive capacity. So Brazil, Russia, India, China, Colombia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Turkey, and so on. The mint countries, Mexico, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Turkey. Many of those countries have followed a path of industrialization, in part high domestic investment, in part attracting FDI. So that allows them to become more significant exporters because you grow the capacity not just to supply domestically, but you create a productive surplus which you can then export to the rest of the world. Turkey is a really good example of this. So uh, since 2015, Turkey's share of exports in GDP has gone up from about 17% through to nearly 30%, in part helped by a weak exchange rate. But Turkey's export share of GDP has gone up quite significantly. And they have a nicely diversified industrial base, textiles, cars, insulated wires and what have you. So Turkey is becoming a major export economy. It does have major economic problems, of course, but exports growing strongly. The pattern of trade now reflecting the investment in those sectors. There we go. This was a revision video on pattern of trade. Thanks for joining in. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. Lots more revision videos coming on key topics. Thanks for joining in. Take care, stay safe, stay curious, and see you sometime soon.